Good morning, everyone. Bonjour tout le monde. Ani. My name is France Gilina, and I'm the MPP for Nickel Belt. We are here today, workers, president of the OFL, Patty Coates, as well as many, work, many MPP, NDP MPP, to send a clear message to the Doug Ford Conservatives that Ontario needs anti-scab legislation now. We all know that 98, sometimes 99 percent of collective agreements are negotiated without work disruption. Only two, sometimes one percent, end up in a strike or lockout. Of those one or two percent, few employers will decide to use scab labor. Although it is a rather small number, it affects the people, the workers, the family, and the community in huge and long-lasting ways. So everyone knows that the use of scab labor makes strikes and lockout last longer. The body of evidence that support this is recognized everywhere, even by the Minister of Labor. So why do we want labor disruptions to last longer? That doesn't help businesses, doesn't help employer, and certainly does not help workers and communities. But the larger negative effect are on workers, on their families, and on their communities. Employers usually prey on vulnerable people to cross the picket line, often with little regards for the health and safety on the job. And once the labor dispute is over, they toss them to the curb, never to talk to them again. Most of these vulnerable workers who cross the picket line will face hardship for a long time. Hardship for themselves, for their family, and often it is the whole community who will be affected for decades to go. BC and Quebec have anti-scab legislations for decades and business drives. We are debating a labor bill right here, right now at Queen's Park. We could bring anti-scab legislation in a few days, a few weeks, it could become a reality in Ontario. We ask the Ford government to work for workers, to protect workers, and pass anti-scab legislation. I would now like to invite Jamie West to the podium. Good morning, everybody. My name is Jamie West. I am the Labour Critic for the Ontario NDP. New Democrats know whose side we were on. We are workers, and we will always have workers' backs. For nearly 30 years, New Democrats have tabled 16 bills to ban the use of replacement scab workers. And for nearly 30 years, corporate conservatives and liberals have fought to stop anti-scab legislation. The reality is that scabs prolong strikes and they prolong lockouts. The reality is that scab workers give employers little incentive to reach a fair deal. 98% of labor disputes are resolved at the bargaining table. 98% of labor disputes are resolved without any work stoppage at all. And bringing in scab replacement workers artificially lengthens the even smaller portion of the 2% of labor disputes that have used them. I come from a union town and I am proud of my blue collar working class background. I know what it's like to be on strike. I spent a year of my life on strike. And I know what it's like to have our labor dispute unnecessarily extended because of the use of scab replacement workers. That was in 2009, more than a decade ago, and to this day, my community still bears the scars from workers in Sudbury and Nickel Belt being pitted against each other for almost a year during that strike. And there is no doubt in my mind that if the company was prohibited from using replacement workers, our agreement would have been reached months sooner. To be clear, it's not just the immediate impact during a specific labor dispute. Using scab labor takes advantage of desperate people. It uses them to create divides in our communities. It uses them and it leaves them behind. The reality is when companies choose to use scabs, they use them. They turn a routine, typically short-lived work stoppage into a drawn-out, destructive conflict that pits workers against workers, that pits families against families. Banning replacement workers limits the unnecessary destruction of economic potential of workplace morale, community co cohesion. It limits the necessary destruction of individual lives and friendships. 
It simply makes sense for the well-being of everyone. Ontario workers deserve better, and New Democrats know whose side we're on. We are workers, and we will always have workers' backs. I'd now like to introduce Roop Chandoon, the Vice President of Steelworkers Toronto Area Council, to share his story. Roop Chan. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Brother Jamie. Good morning, everyone. My name is Roop Chandoon, and I'm the Vice President of the Steelworker Toronto Area Council and also the Local 8300 Vice President. The reason why I'm here today in support of the introduction of this handicapped legislation, and this is why. When employers bring in replace, replacement workers during a strike or lockout, all it does is extend labor disputes. The employer can simply walk away from the bargaining table with the idea they can continue to run operations using scabs. In local 8300, my local, we experienced a labor dispute not too long ago. The sole reason the strike lasted so long was because we have no anti-scab legislation in this province. On April 26, 2021, in our local 8300, I personally watched as 32, 32 of our members went on strike after the employer offered a contract that started with a zero percent increase in wages for its workers, workers who made little above minimum wage. Rex Plus, then owned by Richards Packaging, reported $69 million revenue increase due to the pandemic and in 2020 provided it, its executives with bonuses that increased compensation by another 180 percent. The money was there. The company simply thought that they could push around their, their workers, made up primarily of uh, immigrant women, and force a contract on them. Spirits were high on the picket line, and these women stayed strong when young students from a temp agency were brought in by the company. The temp workers were primarily young girls with little or no work experience attempting to take over the roles of these members who had upwards of 35 years of experience at the company. We don't blame these young women. They, they had no idea what they were walking into. This was not only dangerous, but completely undermines the collective bargaining process. The strike from, lasted from April 26, 2021 to June 27, 2021, two months. Two months that the company should have been at the bargaining table, but instead, continue, uh, instead continue to operate while its workers watched from the picket line. We are proud that these women st stayed strong and united on the picket line. As the scab labor continued, the quality of production dropped which incurred and added an immense cost to the company. Because of the company's plan to use cab labor failed, the union was able to negotiate a 4.5% increase plus sign-in bonus with no concessions for four years. We need anti-scab legislation because the use of scabs is a serious risk to health and safety and simply prolongs what is meant to be a fair collective bargaining process. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roop. I'd like to now introduce MPP Lisa Gretzky, the MPP for Windsor West. Thank you, Jamie. Good morning, everyone. I'm Lisa Gretzky, the MPP for Windsor West and co-sponsor of the NDP bill, the Anti-Scab Labour Act 2023. I'm pleased to be joined here today by workers from my region of Windsor-Essex. They work at Windsor Salt and are members of Unifor Local 240 and 1959. Local 240 President Jody Nesbitt is also with us and she will be speaking as well. Windsor Salt workers have been on strike for 40 days. They're fighting against the outsourcing of their jobs by a US-based holding company. These workers mine and produce products all of us across Ontario, across Canada, and frankly, beyond rely on and use. They produce agriculture salt, road salt, pool salt, water softening pellets, high grade salt, kosher salt, pickling salt, fine flake salt, and flour salt. 
If you use salt to season your food, salt your sidewalks and driveways, or use roads that have been salted in the Windsor months, it's likely from Windsor Salt in Windsor, Essex. These workers are miners, skilled tradespeople, lift truck operators, general laborers, lab techs, shipping clerks, payroll clerk, and janitors. And I just want to take the opportunity to actually recognize, uh, personally recognize the workers that are standing with me uh, today from Windsor Salt. Uh, as I mentioned, we have uh, Unifor Local 240 President Jody Nesbitt, Carrie Burroughs, Lindsay Malosh, and from Unifor Local 1959, we have Eric Brown, Dario Zuick, and Chad Gerard. These workers behind me and every worker across Ontario need and deserve anti-scab labour legislation. It is absolutely appalling that in Ontario, we still have a system that allows employers to lock out workers and use scab workers to take their jobs during that lockout or during a strike. Scab labour undermines collective bargaining, prolongs labour disputes and removes the employer's incentive to negotiate in good faith. It also divides communities and preys on people desperate to feed their families and keep a roof over their heads. Recently, at Highbury Canco in Leamington, they used scab workers to drag out a labor dispute for 23 days. Most of that time, the employer simply refused to bargain with the union in good faith. Those workers were represented by UFCW Local 175. All workers deserve to be respected and protected. Ontario workers gained collective bargaining and labour dispute protection in 1993 when the NDP government passed anti-scab labour legislation. Not long after that, in 1996, the Mike Harris Conservatives gutted the province's Labour Relations Act and ripped up anti-scab labour protections. We must bring back anti-scab labour law in Ontario. It will shorten labour disputes, reduce safety risks, at workplaces and make the bargaining process fair for everyone involved. I am honoured to represent Windsor. It's a strong labour town with an incredible workforce and community. I know that they and workers across the province will benefit from this anti-scab labour bill if it becomes law. This is the 16th time the Ontario NDP has introduced this anti-scab labour legislation since the Conservatives scrapped it. My NDP colleagues and I stand in solidarity with workers across Ontario. We do it through our actions every day in our communities and here at Queen's Park because solidarity is an actionable thing. It's not just a photo op. It's time for the Ford government to step up, stop with the working for workers rhetoric and pass anti-scab legislation. And now I'm going to invite Jody Nesbitt, president of Local 240, who represents Windsor Salt Mine Workers to say a few words. Thank you, Lisa. Good morning. As Lisa said, my name is Jody Nesbitt and I'm president of Unifor Local 240 based in Windsor, Ontario. Since the beginning of unions, it is known that the use of replacement workers has never helped resolve labour disputes. In fact, the use of scab labour has only compounded and prolonged these disputes. This action instead carries this poison of resentment into our communities and provinces that lingers many years after an agreement is finally reached. We have a right to free and fair bargaining. It's in our constitution. Using scab labor is not free nor fair. It harms all workers. This government has the opportunity to change that. I have bargained hundreds of agreements along with local 1959 President Bill Wark. We know how to close deals. Employers need to know how to close deals and to bargain in good faith without the use of scab labour. Thank you. Thank you, Jody. And before I turn the mic over again, I, I, sorry I missed in my remarks. Uh, when we're talking about Highbury Canco in reference to comments that were made by uh, the representative from Steel here today, uh, at Highbury Canco, the workers were getting bussed in from all over Windsor, Essex. The vast majority of those workers didn't speak English or English was not a first language. In fact, we suspect that many of those young workers uh, that were being bussed in, the scab workers, were actually international students. They were going into a workplace with language barriers, where they didn't feel they had any rights to speak up if they were in unsafe working conditions. Uh, and so that's why we say this is this is praise on 
not only the workers that are on the picket lines uh, that are locked out or on strike, but it really preys on those scab workers that these companies are bringing in. And in our case, they were shipping them in by the bus loads to cross a picket line to go in and do work in a factory when it was really unsafe for them to do so. Um, and so now I want to pass on the mic to my colleague, uh, Jennifer French, the MPP for Oshawa. Thank you and good morning. My name is Jennifer French and I am the member of Provincial Parliament for Oshawa, which is a strong union town. And I am very pleased to be here with the official opposition as part of this team, bringing this anti-scab legislation forward again before the legislature. As you have heard, this is the 16th time that the Ontario NDP has brought this legislation forward. Ontario used to have anti-scab legislation that was brought in by an NDP government. However, the Harris Conservatives got rid of that straight away and ever since, workers and those who respect them have been fighting to reintroduce protections against the use of replacement workers. Today at Queen's Park, I'm joined by Unifor 222 Executives, President Jeff Gray and Rob Romano. And recently in Oshawa, we had a case of striking 222 cleaners who were working for a contracted cleaning company at the university. That company unnecessarily prolonged a strike by bringing in scab labor. And when I spoke to the cleaners on the lines, they were very distressed because the replacement workers were being dropped off in unmarked vans and were sprinting between residential buildings to get to the workplace. These replacement workers had to use Google Translate to communicate with the striking workers who were trying to explain to them that they were not properly trained, that they did not have appropriate protective equipment, and that it was not right that they were crossing a picket line. Those particular replacement workers were being sent into university level two laboratories that have very expensive equipment, that require special handling, have substances that require training. However, their employer sent them in anyway with garbage bags and cheap gloves. That was a bad situation. It always is a bad situation. There is often an imbalance of power between employer and workers, and the power of a strike is what makes it an effective tool. Scab labor prolongs strikes and labor disputes. Scab labor disrespects workers. And this is a government that has never respected workers or ensured that they had protections, fair wages, paid sick days, or tools like anti-scab legislation to even the playing field. I am looking forward to reintroducing this private member's bill and will encourage this conservative government to make it law and make things fair. I would be very pleased to next introduce MPP Wayne Gates from Niagara Falls. Thank you very much, Jen, for introducing me. I'll do this quickly. I've been involved in the labor movement for 40 years. I've seen the real damage that the scab labor does in this province. Going and strike isn't normal. It's really rare. Workers don't want to go on strike. Nearly 98% of collective agreements are bargained without a strike or a lockout. Why is the government giving bad employers or scumbag employers, as the minister refers to them, the tool to go ahead and trample over the rights of workers on strike? It's a, it was an NDP government that passed anti-scab legislation, but then Mike Harris, the conservative government, scrapped the anti-scab legislation and has caused real damage to workers. 26 years, that's how long this has been in, under a conservative and liberal government. And I want to talk about one thing that I participated in while I was president of Local 199. In 1997, and I think it's important to talk about our history, I was there and witnessed firsthand the company PC World, right here in Toronto had locked out their workers, represented by CAW, and were demanding pay cuts. The company was using scab labor, and the labor movement came together from around the province to picket the anti-worker action of PC World. They locked out. The locked out workers, think about this, took over the plant and kicked out the scab workers. PC World won a court injunction, and the police came to remove picketers. Hundreds of police mobilized to remove picketers as the company continued to try to use scab labor. Police attempted to escort people off the picket line, resulting in very tense moments. Ultimately, and this is the key, workers' solidarity, because that's what unions are all about, we won. And the employer 
was forced back to the bargaining table. But with anti-scab legislation, the whole issue didn't have to happen. The strike was eight months, eight months. It forced, the, forced all those employees to take over the plant. These are law-abiding residents that just cared about their job. They wanted to go to work. They wanted to make sure that they took care of their families, paid their bills, paid their rent, paid their mortgages. Yet because of the conservative government and their position, they had to take the plant over. The current Labor Minister of Labor says that he is working for workers and he has the backs of workers in this province. Well, now it's time for him to prove it. Supporting this legislation would tell the scumbag employers the minister refers to that they can't get away with bad faith bargaining anymore. It should be a fundamental right of workers in this province to negotiate a fair and reasonable collective agreement. Legislation like this helps to protect their right, protect workers, protect communities. Thank you very much, and I'll pass this back over to Franz Jelena to closing remarks. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for some moving testimonies. We are here today to ask the Ford government to bring anti-scab legislations to Ontario. Ontario can't wait anymore. I also want to mention that tomorrow is the 10th anniversary of the passing of Peter Cormos. Peter Cormos was a NDP MPP renowned for working for workers, renowned for defending workers. He uh, had brought anti-scab legislation to this legislature every single year since the Mike Harris had taken it away. When he passed, I continued and brought it every single session. It would be an honor to uh, have this come into legislation. We have a labor law on the docket right now. Ontario can and will bring anti-scab legislation. On peut prendre des questions en français ou en anglais. We're happy to take questions in English or in French. France, you said that it's a petit percentage of employers who use the briseurs of grève, but clearly there are recent examples of this kind of tactic. If you could explain in French the impact of doing this, finally. When Premièrement, on sait tous que 98, certaines années, 99 euh, des conventions collectives sont négociées. Il n'y a pas euh, ni grève ni lockout. Il y a 1 à 2 qui finissent en grève ou en lockout. Et de ceux-là, c'est encore un plus petit nombre euh, où est-ce que l'employeur décide d'utiliser des briseurs de grève. L'expérience est claire. Avec les briseurs de grève, la grève ou le lockout dure plus longtemps. Mais ce que l'on sait également, euh, c'est que les dommages qui sont faits à ces travailleurs-travailleuses-là, euh, les travailleurs-travailleuses qui euh, euh, croisent la ligne de piquetage, euh, sont souvent des gens vulnérables eux autres-mêmes. Et après, ils vont vivre avec les conséquences de ça, les conséquences pour eux-mêmes, pour leur famille et souvent pour la communauté entière. Les dommages qui sont faits restent là pour des décennies, parfois des générations. Euh, le député Jamie West euh, était en grève pendant un an, de 2009 à 2010. Ceux qui ont croisé le piquet de grève, on sait tous dans ma communauté c'était qui. Et ces gens-là, en 2023, ont encore beaucoup de difficultés. Il y a des grèves qui se sont passées il y a une génération. Et je peux aller dans n'importe quel euh, endroit public et on va savoir c'est qui ces gens-là. On ne veut plus vivre ça. On ne veut plus vivre des grèves, des lockouts plus longs. On ne veut plus vivre que des travailleurs, travailleuses vulnérables sont utilisés pour croiser la ligne de piquetage. Et on ne veut plus vivre les euh, difficultés que ces travailleurs-là, leurs familles et les communautés vivent pour absolument rien. Il faut arrêter ça. La 16e fois que vous présentez le projet de loi, euh, il y a cette, ce projet de loi du ministre du Travail présente. Moi, est-ce que ça pourrait être potentiellement un amendement proposé à cette loi ou qu'est-ce qui a changé dans le contexte? Euh, absolument. 
on a une loi qui modifie la loi du travail en ce moment, qui est en train d'être débattue à Queen's Park. C'est une opportunité parfaite pendant qu'on a un, une loi déjà euh, qu'on est en train de débattre, euh, d'y inclure euh, la loi anti-briseur de grève pour en finir une fois pour toutes avec les difficultés que ça amène à tout le monde. Jody. Uh, could you tell us a bit about what is this current state of status of the strike and what kind of replacement workers have been brought in? So we know that um, we are going back in with the company on Monday, April 3rd, uh, beginning with uh, their corporate lawyer and uh, from the, the U.S. And the scab labor has not been introduced to this point. Like, they haven't been bringing them in, but it is a very... Uh, close near reality that uh, we're very concerned about. We've seen this in Godbridge and uh, we just seen it in our community with uh, the Highbury Canco. How is a scab uh, defined in this legislation? Is, uh, is it specifically replacement workers or are companies just not able to hire at all while there's a, uh, a labor dispute? The um SCAB, replacement workers is what they're called in, in legislations, is uh, truly described. And yes, in case of emergency, the, uh, the employers is allowed to continue. There is a number of cases that are described. I come from a mining town. Uh, when there's a strike, everybody agrees that care maintenance have to be done into those mines. The union agrees, the employer agrees. We make sure that the, the mines don't flood, don't, don't get destroyed while the But that's not what we're talking about. Replacement workers are clearly uh, defined in legislations uh, to be crossing picket lines to do the work of uh, union workers on strike or lockout. And there, the bill is quite lengthy uh, because we go into quite a bit of details as to what can and cannot be done and uh, to make the definitions really clear for everyone. We can give you a copy of the bill if you want. Yeah. It'll be up on the, uh, <laughs> on the internet today, I'm sure. It will be. So, that's okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Thank you, everyone. Chimmy Wedge.